friends, I'm so glad you're here. All summer, we're finding out what it means to have true confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. When you know how much God loves you, you feel like you can take on any challenge life throws your way. You can press play and live with confidence every day. All right, I've got another fun copycat dance moves video for you. Let's see if you can copy all the moves. Are you ready? Let's press play. Come on, put them keep the music going, shall we? Everyone stay on your feet and let's get ready to sing and worship God together. Feel the wonder, say his name, watch the darkness slip away, put your power on display, say goodbye to
Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters 5 and 6. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message, a battle plan unlike any other. Wow, uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warming up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. <laughs> like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just, like, go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord, and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese! Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward! March! The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city! Oh, oh, As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. Little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last, the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked, and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well-known everywhere in the land.
It's true, we can trust God no matter what. Joshua certainly believed that. He followed God's plan and believed that God's way was the best. And that's why he had the confidence to lead God's people to victory. Remember, our bottom line for this week is God's plan is the best plan. And we can always see how things will work out in God's plan. Think about what it was like for Jesus' friends, the disciple, when he died on the cross. That must have been so sad. They must have felt like it was all over. But everything made sense later when they saw and heard that Jesus had come back to life. Sometimes we can't see how things will turn out, but it's important that we choose to keep following God and keep living His way. We can always have confidence in Him. Dear God, thank you for the story of Joshua. Thank you all that it teaches us about you. Your plans are always good. Your way is always the best. Please help us to be like Joshua and trust your plan for our lives too. And help us to remember to trust you and follow you, even when it's not easy. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.